Today is May 5th, 2011. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan, and our cameraman is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. We are privileged to have with us today Virginia Kirby Sullivan McGowan. Welcome, Jenny. May I ask when and where you were born? Uh, in Waltham, Massachusetts, November 20th, 1926. Where do you currently live? Here in Natick. Your marital status? I am a widow. Any children? <laughs> I have 15 children, uh, 29 grandchildren, and number seven great-grandchildren is coming. Okay. And where, do you, where did you grow up? Nonantum, which is part of Newton. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what was it like growing up? in the yeah. at that time? Well, there weren't many rich people around at that mm -hmm. time. It was a uh, Italian-French area. Mm -hmm. um, my school was down, I went to a French school, a French Catholic school, and it was down the street. And the church was right there. We had a big playground right down the street. So everything was there that we needed. Mm -hmm. I understand your father was in the Navy after World War I. Right. And is that how you got your name? They were, my mom and dad were married in the state of Virginia. Mm -hmm. And I understand you had a lot of relatives growing up in the area? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Of course, back in Nonanta. All right. And uh, where, did, where and when did you graduate from high school? I went to Newton High School, graduated in 1945. Mm -hmm. And did you do work or college? Uh, I was in the Cadet Nurse Corps, that was the last class. So actually, I was in the service, uh, but after three months, I found it just wasn't for me, so I left. And this was in 1945? Right. Okay. Um, tell us a little more about that. Uh, about the Corps? Yeah. Um, well, as I said, it was the last class. It was a great opportunity for the people who stayed. Mm -hmm. uh, everything was paid for. Uh, we were registered in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was, as I say, it was good, but I, ever since I was little, I wanted to be a nurse for some reason, but mm -hmm. when I get into it, uh, it just wasn't for me. So uh, you were actually in Washington, D.C.? No, we were in Waltham, Massachusetts. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. What was your life like before World War II broke out? Um, my sister and I were, um, after school or on Saturdays, we would uh, take dancing lessons, mm -hmm. and uh, so we were in recitals or uh, we danced in the theaters where they had the movies and whatever. Okay. So. And what was your sister's name? My teacher. I, your sister. Oh, I'm sorry, Patricia. Uh, and did you have any other siblings? Yes, I had a uh, brother Buddy who died when he was two. He had a little bit of pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And then I had a brother, uh, David, who died in 2001, I believe it was. Okay. What did you know about Europe and Asia? at that time? Uh, actually, we, it was, you know, in school history mm -hmm. or geography. Other than that, we uh, didn't get into too much of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember where you were uh, when Pearl Harbor was attacked? We were living at my grandfather's down the street, um, and um, it was a Sunday, and my father had a radio in his bedroom, and uh, he heard it, the news mm -hmm. on radio. And uh, so he came, rushed out and told us what happened, and we were all crying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were terrified, just absolutely terrified. Did you um, know anybody who enlisted in the armed services at that point? Yes, I had three uncles in the Army. Uh, by that time, we had moved to Auburndale, which is another part of Newton, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, a lot of the younger fellows were in the service. Mm -hmm. So there was hardly anybody around, any you know, fellows. We were, well, I was 15, and mm -hmm. not boy crazy, but whatever, <laughs> there was nobody around to date. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you write to your uncles or any other? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what were your uh, uncles' names? Um, in the service, in the uh, service. Henry, um, Albert, and um, uh, Arthur. And uh, what branches did they serve? They were all Army. Mm -hmm. 
Did they all come home okay? Yes, they did. Okay. Thank God. And what was uh, the home front like? Did you do victory gardens and stuff like we that? We didn't get to that. The, uh, the soil that we had in Armadale was very sandy. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, we worked after school, and, uh, so there was really not much time. Mm -hmm. What did you do after school? Uh, well, let's see. We babysat mm -hmm. uh, for children in Newtonville. And then uh, when the war got really going, we worked uh, at Raytheon after school. Mm -hmm. Raytheon uh, was a uh, defense plant, okay. and that was in Newton. And what did you do at Raytheon? We um, checked radio tubes uh, for mm -hmm. submarines, uh, airplanes. I, I imagine it's all right to talk about now. It was very mm -hmm. secretive then. Uh -huh. uh, we weren't supposed to talk to one another or anything like that, just concentrate on what our work was. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about rationing? Well, we had the books, the gas ration and the food. Uh, mm -hmm. It wasn't that difficult, really. Uh, when you think about what these poor guys were going through overseas, hmm. I, I never he heard complaints really about anything. Uh -huh. yeah. And did you go to movies often? Yes, we did because uh -huh. you know there was no TV then. Uh, that was our only way to get some relaxation. And what uh, what kind of movies did you like? Musicals, of course. <laughs> okay. And I understand you were in the USO. Tell us about that. Um, well, the word got around that we uh, were, t my sister and I would uh, dance and uh, tap dance and, uh, and sing. And, uh, and my dad played the piano for us a lot of times. He was a professional piano player. So uh, someone asked if we'd like to join the USO. And my father said, as long as it was just New England, it was, mm -hmm. it was OK. So. Um, that's what we did. And did you travel? Uh, just, yeah, they would send a bus for us, or I would meet the bus somewhere, mm -hmm. and then, uh, so that worked out okay. We didn't have to travel, you know, by car or anything mm -hmm. like that. How often did you perform? Uh, probably once a month, uh, sometimes more. Mm -hmm. um, once the veterans, I mean, the boys started to come back, and there was a lot of wounded uh, veterans. They, we went to the hospitals to perform for them. Anything that uh, stands out in your mind about that time? It was very sad because a lot of these fellows weren't much older than we were. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, and they, most of them were just staring off into space. They had mental problems. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was, yeah, it was tough going there for them. Yeah. Really. Did you have any particular numbers that you performed? Uh, any particular songs that stand out? Well, if my dad played, it was there were, <laughs> we did um, clogs that were mm -hmm. Irish, uh, kind of Irish dances, and uh, uh, the buck and wing, what they call a buck and wing. So mm -hmm. uh, usually those two are what we did. Okay. Anything else about um, Homefront during that time that you remember? About what? About uh, any uh, life on the home front. Uh, oh, let's see, uh, drives to collect rubber or tin. Oh, yeah, they, they, that was everywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. And people were excellent about saving all this uh, stuff, uh, you know, papers and um, mm -hmm. uh, tin foil to wrap up a big ball and whatever. Uh, um, no, I never heard any complaints, really. Everybody was gung-ho. They mm -hmm. really did their part. When you were working at Raytheon, uh, were you treated uh, the same as male employees, if there were any? Uh, there were some. They were older mm -hmm. uh, people. Um, oh, yeah, no, no problem there at all. Do mm -hmm. you think that your um, efforts were appreciated after the war? I think so. I think so. In fact, when, while we were working, every Friday, uh, this mm -hmm. is during the summertime, every Friday uh, at lunchtime, the boss would come and give us a pep talk and tell us what a great job we were doing. Mm -hmm. And the big thing was to keep the whole business a secret. It was very, very important. Mm -hmm. They didn't want that to get out at all. So now it's um, 1945. 
you're you've been out of school for a couple of years. You've already no, gone. I graduated in forty five. Right. Okay, graduated in forty five. Right. So you were um, you went to the nurse corps. Yes. 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 When that didn't work out, I got a job in Boston at an insurance company, mm -hmm. and I was um, there until I married Joe Sullivan. Tell us about that. Well, we went together. Uh, I met him when I was 15 and he was 16. Mm -hmm. And um, it was an off and on mm -hmm. romance. So. Well, he was in the Navy at the time. He was at BC uh, High at mm -hmm. the, when I met him. And then he went into the service for, I believe, three years. Mm -hmm. He was on a, a destroyer escort. He did see some action, but he wasn't in the thick of it. But mm -hmm. uh, I think he got a submarine or two. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when did you and Joe get married? Um, April 6, 1947. And where did you live? We lived with my mother for uh, three years mm -hmm. until we found something um, that we could buy. Mm -hmm. And what was Joe doing at the time? Uh, he had started Boston College mm -hmm. Law School. And when did you move to Natick? 1953. And how many children did you have at the time? When we moved there, yeah. um, let's see, one, four. Tell us what Natick was like at that time. We absolutely loved Natick. It was, mm -hmm. It's a hometown, really. It's a, a wonderful place to bring up children. Uh, we liked it very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you raised children all right. <laughs> So you first lived, I believe, on Reynolds Ave. Yes. And then moved to Washington Street. Mm -hmm. Let's fast forward a little bit now to the mid to late 1960s when your older children were entering the military. Mm -hmm. So first it was Joe. Mm -hmm. And what branch did he was, in, was he in? He was in the Navy. And what did he do? He was on a submarine, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, nuclear subs. And he wasn't allowed to tell anyone where where they were. Mm -hmm. We found out later that he was under the ice cap in the Arctic, mm, looking for Russian submarines. Okay. And then it was Rich. He and was in the army. Mm -hmm. He was the only one who uh, really saw action. He was in Vietnam mm -hmm. for 13 months, mm -hmm. and he received the Bronze Star. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you, uh, knowing that you have two boys overseas, one of them in Vietnam? Well, it was tough on everybody because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we thought about him constantly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we wrote to him and we sent packages and, and, of course, he couldn't tell us just about where he was. We knew he was in that area, but mm -hmm. um, he went through a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and we were lucky that he didn't have any mental problems or anything mm -hmm. like that because sometimes these poor fellows can't forget what's, what they've seen mm -hmm. and need a lot of treatment when they get back home. Mm -hmm. And then there was Kevin. Kevin was in the Navy. Um, uh, they sent him to Purdue. And um, so he owed them a few more, a few years, but he was in for 12 years. He mm -hmm. got married and had the children. Uh, it's too bad he left. I, I think he, he regrets it now that he should have stayed in for 20 years when he would mm -hmm. get some compensation. And do you remember what he did while he was in the Navy? He was in intelligence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I believe there were two more sons. What Tommy was in the Navy. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think he left the States. Um, I don't remember. There wasn't any action, mm -hmm. no, any war then. And um, Neil was in the Army. Michael. I forgot about Michael. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Michael mm -hmm. and uh, Neil were both in the Army. Mm -hmm. uh, they got to go to Germany, and they loved it over there. There was, mm -hmm. you know, there wasn't a war. Yeah. No. And overall, um, how did you feel about them joining the military and serving? 
Well, we didn't have any money really to send them to school and college. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they decided, well, this is what we'll do and get something on the GI Bill and whatever, so that's what happened. Okay. Now let's jump a little bit further to the grandchildren, mm -hmm. several of whom have also served in the military, beginning yeah. with uh, Chris in the Air Force. Chris, yeah. That's, he was um, in for eight years, I believe, mm -hmm. and he became a major. And they wanted him to stay in, but he just wanted to leave. And Chris was whose son? Kevin's. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let's see, we also have Eric. Eric, Eric. Um, mm -hmm. who was Brian's son. Mm -hmm. And he's in the Marine Corps? He's Marine Corps, he's over in Afghanistan. There's also Jake, who was oh, Tommy's yes. son. Tommy yeah. is a Marine. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Jake is a Marine, and uh, mm -hmm. he's out now. But he was in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Looking back over what is now three good four generations mm -hmm. of the family in the military, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I was happy to see them, you know, um, come back in one piece. Mm -hmm. uh, I just uh, naturally are worried about them. But I think it was something that they had to do to mm -hmm. grow up. Uh, and that would certainly do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's get back to your experiences during World War II with the USO show. Tell us about your trip to Cushing Hospital. Um, that was, um, yeah, that was uh, a, a lot of wounded there. Mm -hmm. And um, they looked like kids to me, you know, mm -hmm. and they were, some were badly wounded. And, mm -hmm. But, uh, but that was that was one of a little bit of a funny uh, little story. Uh, the mm -hmm. the army truck parked in front of our house to take us to the hospital, and uh, we were giggling once inside. And Dad, my father played the piano for us, so he came too. We were saying, supposing that the neighbors were looking out the window, here we are getting into a big army truck, <laughs> wondering what why we were in the mm -hmm. we were taken off for something or other we did to the government or whatever, but. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that was, uh, we, we went to a lot of hospitals and mm -hmm. I think we did some good. Now, after the war, did you pursue your career in nursing? I did as a, an aide at Leonard Moss. Uh, we had to go to school up there for, oh, I don't know, about 16 weeks, I believe it was, mm -hmm. and uh, became an aide, and then I worked off and on up there. Uh, I did go into an LPN course. Mm -hmm. But it just, that didn't work out. I kept getting ulcers, so I had to stop. <laughs> but uh, it was a good program. Yeah. Tell us about your second husband, Tom McGowan. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in the Army during World War II, mm -hmm. and he was uh, in the Philippines. Uh, he didn't see action, but uh, he was in charge of all the food. Uh, he ordered the food and all that. He was very good. Uh, and he was a uh, he, he flew a plane before he drove a car. <laughs> yeah, he was um, a bombardier. Oh. A plane. And uh, where, uh, how did you meet Tom? Uh, we were, uh, let's see, I was at a VFW function and mm -hmm. uh, I met him there. Yeah. His wife had passed away. Mm -hmm. And uh, how many children did he have? He had ten. He lost one mm -hmm. to cancer. She was only six. Mm -hmm. yeah. And did any of his children join the military? No, they they didn't. You know, they, I don't know what happened there. They just didn't want to go in. They weren't. Um, um, you know, they were just as happy to mm -hmm. be what they were. They okay. they had gone to college or in college, so mm -hmm. uh, they were happy with that life. Okay. Now, I also understand that your brother also entered the military. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, David was in the Marine Corps, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he enjoyed that very much. Yeah. He, uh, he was here in the country for mm -hmm. quite a while. Okay. 
Jenny, is there anything else that you would like to uh, impart uh, for those who are going to be seeing this tape in the future? Well, if they know of anyone in the service uh, at the moment, overseas or anywhere, no matter where they are, just make sure you're right to them and uh, let them know you care. Uh, it, it's very important because they look forward to, to mail so much. And, uh, but I know all of you wrote to, oops, I'm sorry, Henny. <laughs> <laughs> all of my family wrote uh, mm -hmm. to the fellows and it, mm -hmm. it meant a lot. Okay. Well, Virginia Sullivan McGowan, we'd like to thank you for your participation in the Native Veterans Oral History Project. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Okay. My pleasure. Mm -hmm.